last episode. the word of God through Jesus Christ street and outreach ministry raw and uncut productions Perfect time for the word. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the word. God bless you. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. The Lord has assigned me as apostle, teacher, and prophet of the word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Ministry. Thank you for joining the ministry for this broadcast that God is doing today. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't even know if he's going to have friends with me or not. I don't know, but we're going to find out. You can reach the ministry at 475-300-3850-24 hours. The ministry's website is also on the screen, so that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the Cash App link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others, just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you, and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have you are in my life, for all that you've done for thy servant, Lord, you're just so wonderful, you're just so wonderful, I can't think of how was my life to be without you, as long as I have Jesus, I have a satisfied mind, this is my prayer, sometimes I don't have And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Telecast. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr., uh, and I'm coming to you by way of television, praise the Lord, and for those that are on Facebook live as well in YouTube or whatever country, state, city, county, town, village, outhouse, wherever you're watching it from, may the Lord bless you. Please hold the ministry up in prayer. I first give an honor to God, who is the Lord of my life, of course, and the one who appointed me 
in the office of apostle. Secondarily, uh, we're trying to wind down for the end of the year word. You know, at the end of the year, the Lord uses us to give a prophetic word um, to the cities or to the people that's watching and so forth. But anyway, I don't want to get stay on that because it's very important. This is a very important broadcast It's dealing with demonology. A lot of people uh, are not into demonology. They don't understand it. That's why they get beat up. They don't know how to fight their enemy. And demonology is the focal point of this ministry. The focal point was demonology because that's how the Lord, he uses me to teach on demonology and to expose the enemy, uh, how to be delivered and uh, free from all kind of bondage and things. And so thus this being a deliverance ministry. So uh, it's very important that you pay attention to this. I pray that you have your Bibles, that you have some pens and paper and get into this because this, I'm telling you, you don't want to miss this. This is going to be a very powerful lesson. Now, before we get into it, let's open up with a word of prayer. Now I'm standing here, uh, but the Lord said, take off my shoes because I'm standing on holy ground. So excuse me for a minute. I take off my shoes and... And now, let's go into a word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you asking you to forgive us for our sins and shortcomings and our faults and our wrongs. Forgive us, Lord, for any and everything that we have said, done, thought, and felt that's not pleasing in your sight. Any way that we have hindered our own blessings. Any way that we are hindering our own season. Any way, oh Lord, that we are hindering our own growth. We ask that you forgive us. Lord, just forgive us. We don't know no better. We, we, we just keep messing up. We're trying to do right, but we're messing up. So Lord, please forgive us. You said in 1 John 1 and 9 that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just. If we confess our faults, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I'm asking you to make me usable and use me. Fill me with the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Give me a spiritual understanding of your word. And right now I'm excited. I, I, I feel like running. I feel like jumping. I feel like standing on top of the, the podium and doing a pair away. <laughs> but Lord, I can't do that. I, I'm just excited right now. And I ask that you, that you calm me down. That you moderate the anointing of my life. And that you use me after making me usable. And use me. And you do the teaching. Allow me to decrease that you may increase. And while you're ministering to your people, whilst on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. I'm crying, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry, whilst on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, 
tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. Father, in Jesus' name, please, please feed us. Please talk to us. Please empower us. <laughs> Satan, we rebuke you. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Not on our own power, but by the power of the Holy Ghost, we rebuke you. We bind you in Jesus' name. We bind you in the earth realm because you're already bound in the heavenlies. We plead the blood of Jesus against you. We loose all of our stuff from your grip. And we plead the blood of Jesus over our stuff as a covering so you can't touch it no more. Every blessing that God has for us, every vision that God has shown us, every word that God has revealed unto us, the blessings that he's bringing upon us as the year closes and as the new year comes in. We plead the blood over these things. And we command you to go back to the pit of hell from where you came. And come back, not hither, in Jesus' name. And every demon that works for you, it don't matter their name. It don't matter their rank. It don't matter. We plead the blood against them. And we cast them out of our life and our affairs. We loose our stuff from their grip as well. And we plead the blood of Jesus over our stuff as a covering. And we claim the victory. We command those demons to go back to the pit of hell also. And we plead the blood against them that they don't come back this way in our life no more. Father, we ask. In Jesus' name, that you dispense heavenly angels to come into the earth realm where we are. That they may take up that place that those demons were in. And we thank you for being our God. We thank you for being our Father. We thank you for the victory. Whatever your children are praying for whether they're watching by television, whether they're watching by YouTube, whether they're watching by Facebook Live or Google Plus or Instagram or wherever they're watching from, whatever city, state or town or country, whatever they pray according to your will, this ministry touches and agrees with them that you be in the midst. And now, Father, talk to us. We are waiting to hear from you. In Jesus' name, we thank you. <laughs> we thank you. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Oh, glory. Turn your Bibles to the book of Mark, chapter 9. And this is a very, very familiar scripture and though the Lord has used us to fellowship in this scripture over the years and on more than one occasion though some of you that are in leadership have been used by God to minister this word as well I'm not talking to the copycats I'm not talking to the Facebook celebrities who came in ministry once they click join on Facebook. I'm talking to those that the Holy Ghost has called, chosen, and set over a work. <laughs> That's what I'm talking to. Though you have been used by God to handle this scripture on more than one occasion, let's walk together in it now. 
And see, the thing is, it don't matter who's watching. You know, people try to copy you when they see God use you, but I'm not worried about that. They say that uh, imitation is flattery or something like that, but I'm not even paying no attention to that. Because one thing that you, brother and sister minister, must realize is that no one can copy you. They can try, but it won't work. They can talk like you, but it won't work. They can pray like you, but it won't work. They can sing like you, but it won't work. They can try to preach like you, but it won't work. They can do every gesture you do. If you do like this, they can do it too, mm, but it won't work. If you go this way, they can go that way, but it won't work. Because the best you is you. Remember that. Be encouraged. Mark chapter 9. And we are going to jump into the 14th verse. And we're going to read scripture not as a storybook, but as an instruction manual. We're going to be articulate about this. We are going to read in educated fashion where we see a comma, we're going to pause. Where we see a period, we're going to stop. Where we see a colon and a semicolon, we're going to acknowledge that and respect the position of the punctuation. Not only that, but when we see an italicized word, we're going to emphasize it again for two reasons. The spiritual, well, let's go this way. The natural reason, because when the translators translated it from the Hebrew of his Old Testament, and from the Greek of his New Testament, that word wasn't there. So they inserted it to give it context and they italicized it. The spiritual reason for it is because when God anointed them to translate it, he said, emphasize this word. And it gives it context. And there's meat in that word. So this is how we're going to read. So let's first read the scripture. Uh, we got two scriptures we're going to read. We're going to read this Mark chapter 9 verses 14 through probably 32, but I'm seeing 29. And then my, one of my favorite scriptures, which is Ephesians chapter 6 verses 11 and 12. Now, Mark chapter 9 verse 14. Let's get into this. And when he came to his disciples, I'm in the King James Version, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. Now I'm standing here at this ministry. We have an extensive library. You see some of the books here under this podium. There's a couple of shelves of books in my bedroom. There's several, uh, a few, quite a few bookcases with with all kinds of books. I mean, we have an extensive library. So if we need to go into an NIV or an Amplified or an ESV or a Phillips or whatever, we'll, you'll see me reach. And when you see me reach, that's all it is. No tricks up my sleeve, nothing at all. <laughs> Just nothing but the word around me. And the scribes questioning with them. Now verse 15, and straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him and he asked the scribes what question he with them now i'm led by god to stop for a minute because scribes were the teachers of the law these are the people that when a person was giving them something to write the scribes were the one that wrote it so they were professional writers and by them writing and being teachers of the law their writing encouraged them or equipped them to be very understandable and articulate about what they were writing so it is not surprising that the scribes would question his disciples and it's not odd that jesus would ask the scribes verse 16 what question ye with them? He's saying, what are you asking them? Verse 17, and one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. Write that down, because remember, we're dealing with demonology in this chapter, okay? He said, his son has a dumb spirit. Dumb meaning he couldn't speak, okay? And wheresoever, verse 18, he taketh him, meaning that spirit, he teareth him. That means he throws him all over the place or dasheth him. 
and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answereth him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, meaning that man, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. <laughs> Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Remember that. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind. Stop for a minute. Now I know many of the ministries y'all go to, the leader always says, what? You can't do this or that? Or oh, the Bible says that they only come out by fasting and praying. Or the Bible says that, that some only come out by fasting and praying. Or the Bible says that all come out by fasting and praying. That's, that's a lie. That's, that's not what the scripture says. Look at the verse. That's why I asked you to have your Bibles. Verse 29, and he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. This kind, he said. Verse 30, let's go on and let's just read this and up to verse 32. For he taught his disciples and said unto them, Excuse me, no, let me go back to verse 30. And they departed thence and passed through Galilee, and he would not that any man should know it. For he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. But they understood not that saying and were afraid to ask him. Put a bookmark there if you have one, because this is our base text. And now I'll turn to Ephesians chapter 6, because we're going to grab something from there right quick. That's going to be very powerful and very important to what we're dealing with this evening. Ephesians chapter 6, let's notice uh, verse... 11 and 12, now I suggest you strongly read, I strongly suggest you read verses 1 through 9 so that you can walk up to this verse in your spare time. And verse 10 where Paul says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then in verse 11, we're going to pick up here. He says, put on a whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now, we're going to really dig into this. So I want you to pay attention to this. I highlight it, underline it, circle what we get ready to say right here so you can understand it. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's important that you understand that. 
in the Greek it says blood and flesh, but here in the English it says flesh and blood, but against, now this is four classes of demons. It's important to write this down because after we walk through this today, this is going to help your prayer life. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, or in the Greek it says heavenly places. Now again, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us for our sins and shortcomings and false wrongs. Thank you for preparing the table. Thank you for joining us together. Thank you, Lord, for getting our attention. Now feed us, Holy Ghost. <laughs> feed us. And then give us the victory. Show us how to get the victory. You've given us the land. Show us how to possess it. In Jesus' name, make me usable and use me. Fill me with the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Give me a spiritual understanding of your word and feed me also. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Amen. I know many people say in Jesus' name, but his name don't start with C-H. So I have to say Jesus or Yeshua in his name. I have to close the prayer because if it's not closed in Jesus' name, it's not official. If you're asking for things and it's not in Jesus' name, don't expect it to happen. Write this down, John chapter 14, verse 13, he said, Let's go to verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall, excuse me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Some people think that means you're going to do better work and more work than Jesus by the word greater. Get out of the English, go into the Greek. It don't mean that you'll do greater by quality. It means that instead of him doing it alone many of us that believeth on him he said verse 12 verily verily i say unto you he that believeth on me the works that i do shall he do also and many more of you will be doing what he do if you believe on him his word him in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word was god in the greek in the beginning was theos the logos was theos he was with him from the beginning. Everything that was made, he made. If you believe on him, then what he does, you'll do also. And he said, because I go unto my father. Because when he go to God, when he goes to the father, when he went back to heaven, he gave gifts unto men and he interceded for us. Then he said in verse 13, Verse 13, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. So it has to be done in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 1. If you don't mind, just follow me there. Join me there, actually. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19, Scripture says, For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timothy, that's Sil uh, uh, Silas and Timothy, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. For all the promises of God in him are yea. Some people say, well, the Bible says that in him is yea and nay. That's not what it says. That's whoever told you that, they, they gave you a bum steer. That's why when you use it, it didn't produce no fruit. Look at verse 20. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Amen means I agree. 
So in Jesus' name, it's done. And in Jesus' name, we agree. Remember, Scripture says the devil, we overcome the accuser of the brethren by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. What testimony? When God tells you he's going to do something, when he reveals to you that he's going to do something, you prophets and prophetesses, when God show you dreams and you see a vision of something happening, it's going to come to pass. See, there's a difference between a, a dream and a vision. The dream is a warning or a message. But the vision is when God opened up heaven and allowed you to see what he has declared and decreed in the heavenlies, in the third heaven. Now, I know that there's a lot of people try to be deep and have all this authority and they declare and decree so much, but you can't do that because the only one that can declare and decree a thing is God. You got to understand that. If not, the enemy will be able to bamboozle your mind and have you thinking that God is going to change things that God is not going to change. The enemy will have you thinking that God is going to give you things that he's not going to give you. The enemy will have you thinking that God put you in an office of ministry that God didn't call you in. Yes, he might have said ministry, but the office. Did he? Did he? Be careful. Real quick, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 18 or write it down. And we'll get ready to get back into Mark 9. We haven't left it. The Holy Ghost is leading me to go this way and I got to go as he say. In verse 19 of Deuteronomy chapter 18. Let's go back to verse 18. Yes, Deuteronomy 18 verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name I will require it of him. Verse 20, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. He'll be separated. Oh, and he, in, the, in the Old Testament, God said die. He meant it. This was physical death because that prophet was already spiritually dead. But thank God even now for grace and mercy because he's given people time to get it right. That means you false prophets. That prophet lie, you Facebook movie stars. You have a chance to get it right. Verse 21, and if thou shalt say in thine heart, how shall we? Let me read verse 20 again, said the Holy Ghost. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Here we go again. And then God said in verse 21, And if thou say in thy heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? A lot of you need to hear this. Because people have been telling you that God is going to do this. That God is going to do that. That God has said this and that God has said that. Many of you have been advised to pray about a certain thing. And many of you have been advised to look forward for a certain thing. Some of you haven't even caught that. Every year there's some foolish prophet or prophetess or Jezebel spit it or Ahab spit it that's telling you this is your year. Every year they tell you that and it has not been your year yet. God said. God said. And if thou say in thine heart, meaning in your spirit, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? Verse 22, God said, when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not. This is the condition. This is the proof. God said, when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass. 
if it don't follow the word or nor come to pass. That is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but my gum just fell out of my mouth. The prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shall not be afraid of him. So God is saying, don't chew no gum. Then let me put it down. Because I will tell you the truth. The gum <laughs> is almost like a security blanket for me somewhat. Let me sit this in here. Thank you, Jesus. If y'all saw that, I know some are probably cracking up. Because if it was me, I'd crack up too. <laughs> but God says, thou shall not be afraid of him. That means don't reverence them. Don't, don't lift them up. You know the false prophets that are out there, and some of y'all say, well, we, I know some, but I can't say their name, but those of us that are apostles, <laughs> God has called us and given us a bold spirit. I'm going to mention some names. Jordans, Holmes. <laughs> Do we got to go national? Bynum, Jake's, Dollar. McCullough, Myers. There's a lot of them out there that are telling you, Osteen, that God said. Geno Jennings, who says that God never called a woman in ministry, and then he stands and hit the podium like he didn't prove the point. The only point that he proved is he's off. Tony Smith, him too. Cussing in the pool pit. These people you can't listen to. Because if Jesus was standing in the earth realm, he would not be talking like them. If he promised you something, saints, you're going to get it. If he reveals something to you, it's going to come to pass. So we're dealing in this earth realm four classes of demons principalities powers rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places and the Lord said let's go this way we're going back to Mark 9 but first let's fix our plate with Ephesians 6 the principalities are under Satan. Those are high-ranking demons. Those are his first line of defense. The Greek word is arche. It's used 58 times in the New Testament. And it's from the Greek word archomai, which means to commence or begin. Therefore, arche means a commencement or chief in various applications of order, time, place, or rank. Principalities are chief demons. Then the next ones are the powers. They execute the program of Satan. The Greek word for powers there is exosia which is used 103 times in the New Testament and is from the Greek words exesti or exestine which also is exon. Three Greek words that mean the same thing and this word exousia are from those three words in the sense of ability that is and means privilege. In other words, force, capacity, competency, freedom, or objectively mastery, superhuman, authority, jurisdiction, and more. Powers have the jurisdiction and the authority to do what they do. Don't get it twisted, my brethren. No demon, no demon. No demon, no demon is operating outside of their privilege or their position or their lane, 
Some of you might understand. Or their place. Why? Because Satan runs a very organizational government. Which reminds me, the thought that God gave me for this lesson is there is a strategic government that is against you and you and me for life if you are really saved. The title is <laughs> On Your Mark. Get set, get him. This information God is going to reveal to you right now, after tonight, in your prayer life, on your mark. Get set, get him. If your children are wayward and going through problems and you don't know how to fight, after listening to this and following me and walking with me in the scripture, on your mark. Get set. <laughs> get him. Some of you, God is standing there and you say, Lord, why haven't you moved? And God looking at you going on your mark. Get set. Get him. Some of you, God have paused. He said, on your mark, get set. Angels are in heaven waiting to come to your aid. Demons are standing around looking, trying to figure out why did God say that? Because they hear God's voice. They also see angels. So they're wondering, wait a minute, something is shifting in the spirit realm concerning so-and-so. You, 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 and me. Something is, is happening, shifting, concerning them. They, oh, I've been able to turn up the heat, but it hasn't broken. What's going on? Why haven't they folded? It's because God said, on your mark. Get set. And after this lesson, he's going to say, get him. And then you use the word to defeat your enemy. But first, you have to know about your enemy. We talked about the principalities. They're under Satan. We talked about the powers. They are the exousia of the hellish realm. Then there's the rulers, which in the Greek, the word is cosmocrator, and is used one time in the New Testament, which is right there, Ephesians 6, verse 12. And cosmocrator is from the Greek word cosmos, which cosmos means orderly arrangement, in other words, de decoration. By implication, it means the world in a wide or narrow sense, including its inhabitants, literally or figuratively, which figuratively is connected to morally. The world. Cosmocrator means a world ruler, an epithet of Satan. The word epithet means a descriptive phrase, a nickname, a moniker, a title, or a name of Satan. Cosmocrator is used only here, Ephesians 6 and 12 in the New Testament. The next class of demons are spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual is from the Greek word pneumaticos which is used 26 times in the New Testament and means non-carnal. In other words, humanly, which is eugenically or socially, meaning that it's not human. It's not human. It's not social. It's not human. Then it says in the dictionary that these are ethereal, meaning, as opposed to gross, which gross here don't mean what you think it means in English, but in the dictionary it means undisguised or unconcealed. In other words, pneumaticos does not mean anything human or unconcealed. So you can't look at a person and say you're a devil because they're not. You can't look at your relative and say, you're a devil. You can't look at your spouse and say, you're a devil. You can't look at your children and say, y'all ain't nothing but devils. You can't even look at the unsaved and say, y'all are nothing but devils. Because these demons are not unconcealed. 
they're not socially recognizable by us. But pneumaticals, demoniacally speaking, is a spirit. Pneumaticals always connotes the ideas of invisibility and of power. That's why it says not unconcealed because pneumaticals is spiritual and it's concealed. This is where we get the word pneumonia. You can't see pneumonia, but you sure can catch it. It does not occur pneumaticals in the Old Testament or in the Gospels. It is, in fact, an after Pentecost word. Why? Because the Holy Ghost, who is a spirit, he's an intellectual spirit. He is God. His whole operation is spiritual. His nature is spiritual. He is spirit. And he ministers to us and deals with us in and through our spirit. You can only worship God in spirit. I know some of y'all say, well, I didn't thought a prayer and worship God in my mind. No, you can't do that. You can love God with your mind. You can think on uh, lovely things and things uh, 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 that are of good rapport and so forth. But you don't worship God with your mind. So some people say, well, what about people that are, that are laying in the bed on a life support ma uh, machine or that are brain dead or that can hear but can't speak? God raises up intercessors to verbally put in the earth realm what this person is doing in their mind. Jesus did it too when the scripture says that the Pharisees and them were thinking certain things. And Jesus said, why are you thinking so and so and so? He put it out there in the earth realm. So that it could be visible. In John chapter 4 verse 24 when Jesus was talking to the woman at the well. He said God is a spirit. Capital S. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Well what is the truth? John chapter 17 Verse 17, Jesus, when he was praying to himself, he said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. You can only worship God from your spirit according to the word of God, which is the truth. In the book of John, chapter 5, verse 39, none of this is written down. In chapter 5, verse 39, here's what Jesus said search the scriptures for in them ye think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me the scriptures the word the word of God the sword of the spirit spiritual wickedness Spiritual, again, is from the word pneumaticals. Wickedness here is from the Greek word panerea, which is used seven times in the New Testament. And it's from the Greek word paneros, which paneros means hurtful, in other words, evil. So panerea in the Greek means depravity, especially malice and you know malice is the intention or desire to do evil panerea also means plots sins wickedness and lastly this part high places the greek word eporaneous is used 20 times in the new testament and means above the sky it also means in heaven one times because eporaneous is used uh, 30, uh, 20 times in scripture. One times it means heaven. Two times it means celestial, which is spiritual. And 16 times it means heavenly. And one times it means high. So this consists of a spiritual host of wickedness in high places. These four classes of demons 
are who are attacking us. Your children are out in the street because of spiritual wickedness. Pneumaticals, demons, panorea that are out roaming the earth and seducing our children. One of the reasons why the ministries are not able to grow is because these demons that's walking the earth have crept up in the church and got into the bodies of men, of women, of children, and have infiltrated various positions in the place of worship. And the bad part of some of the saints can't tell the difference between the real and the fake. Then God has some people there that he has revealed what's going on. Those are the ones that the leaders look at and say, oh, I see an anointing on you. I know that God is with you. But sit down and shut up until I tell you to move. And those are they that sit down. Why? Because they've been beat up by scripture to a point of thinking that you must honor those that you know are wrong, but you should. God only has you there, and they don't know this, but God only has you there so that that building stays afloat, meaning his judgment won't hit that building as long as you are there. As long as you're there, as long as you're there, his judgment won't hit that building. But angels are ready at any time to come in there and turn that place upside down. The moment God tells you to leave and you're gone, you'll realize that ministry has fallen. There are some there that God has cut the ministry off at the head the pastor or the first lady or the co-pastor which none of this is in scripture uh, uh, co-pastor that's that's not in scripture you don't see in a fivefold ministry look, look at Ephesians chapter 4 and I, I have to tell the truth because if I don't God is going to hold me accountable and I do fear him. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 9. Let's go back to verse 7. But to every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. There's some people that say, well, God haven't caught everybody in any of the fivefold ministry. That's a lie and that's an uneducated person. Don't listen to them. Why? Because if God caught anybody in ministry, in a position of leadership, it is only going to be in one of those five offices watch but to every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ the gift that he's given you verse 8 wherefore meaning therefore he saith, when he Jesus ascended up on high he Jesus led captivity captive he led captivity captive or a multitude, it says in the Greek, of captives. So those that have died and those that have went to Abraham's bosom, when he, scripture says, ascended up on high, he led all of them. Those that were captive in Abraham's bosom by death, he led those that were captive as his captives. And when he went back on high, he gave gifts unto men. Verse 9, now that he ascended, this is verse 9 of chapter 4 of Ephesians, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Meaning this is the same one that first went down and then went up. He that descended, see, verse 10, is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, because there's three heavens. When you look outside, that's the first one. Space is the second one where demons occupy 
and, and, and spiritual wickedness are high places, that's the high places in space. That's why people see uh, uh, what they call UFOs, unidentified flying objects. That's where they see all this activity going on. Even when they look up, they just see, oh, it's a full moon. There's problems. Oh, my goodness. Why is everything? It's, it's a bad atmosphere. In the second heaven, demons operate. The third heaven is where God lives and his angels and where Hebrews talks about us entering into his rest that's where the departed saints are not looking down not walking around heaven right now not fellowshipping with God they have not received their reward but they are resting before God they labored here on earth and when they left saved they're resting Verse 10, again, he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Verse 11, and he gave some. Now, here's what he gave, the gifts. He gave some apostles, semicolon, and some, comma, prophets. If you're a woman and you're in the prophetic office, you are a prophetess. You're not a prophet. Because God is so, so wise and so intelligent, being that he made all languages. If you look in the Greek and the Hebrew, actually let's go to Hebrew, prophetess is Nebiah, which means an inspired woman, a poetess. So that way you don't have to be confused. And prophet is Narbi, which is an inspired male. So in those in that office, the prophetic office, that's for both genders. Narbi and Nebiyah. Stop calling women prophets because that's outside of scripture. You don't believe it. The book of Judges, let's notice. Chapter 4. And let's notice verse 1. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. And the Lord sold them into the land of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Harasheth of the Gentiles. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had nine chariots of iron, and twenty years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. Verse 4, and Deborah a prophetess. The wife of Lapidoff, she judged Israel at that time. That was the ministry God used her over to judge or govern a nation. If people wanted to know if God said this or that, they went to Deborah. She judged Israel. So yes, a woman can be over ministry and it don't mean pastor. If you're a prophetess and God set you over the ministry, stay that. If you're an evangelist, sister, and God set you over ministry, stay that. If you're a teacher like Priscilla, sister, and God set you over ministry, stay that. Because these three offices are biblically sound for sisters. I don't want to get too far off. And he gave some apostles and some comma prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Where's archbishop in there? It's not. Where's chaplain? It's not. Where's the guardian of the four corners of the earth? It's not. Where's the general? It's not. That's the fivefold ministry counted apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. That's five. Other than that, God didn't do it. So now, uh, sometimes that's one of the problems that's harming the ministry is that you're adding stuff that God didn't put in there. And you wonder why gay people can come in and sit down and chill. 
you wonder why the mimes, which is borderline demoniacal, yes, borderline de 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 demoniacal, look at the makeup. Okay. Oh, but no, God told me to worship dance, then worship dance. God told me to praise dance, then praise dance. It don't got nothing to do with makeup because God is looking at your heart, not your face. So you want to uh, impress upon people that you are trying to look as a pneumatic host being or a spiritual being? No. Because through that, Satan has brought pop locking, moon walking, break dancing, and everything else as some pole stripping in the ministry. You don't want to hear that. Some of the sisters, look at them. Praise dancing or worship dancing and wearing outfits that project everything. There's some men that can't wait to see them sisters dance. Why? Because they're looking at what they can see. Tight fitting form. No. No. Mm -mm. Four classes of demons, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, out of those four demons, here's what we're going to talk about. But first, remember Ephesians 4 and 11, he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. That means the maturing of the saints. A lot of people say, we're not perfect. No, no, the perfect you talking about means flawless. And God already knows that. That's why he said there's none righteous, no, not one. But the perfecting of the saints means the spiritual maturing of the saints. Your prayer life should be mature. Your walk should be mature. Your character should be mature. Your conversation should be mature. The five four ministries for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Ministry here means service in the Greek. Brother and sister minister, he put your gift in the body for the work of the ministry. I, I know a few ministers say we need to work the word, but that's witchcraft. No, you don't manipulate or work the word. You can't do that. Hocus pocus, alakazam, I throw this word on you and that is what you am. No, man. No. You don't work the word. You apply the word and let the word do what it do. For the work of the ministry, and then it says for the edifying of the body of Christ. Edifying here is like the building up of a building. You should be built up in Christ. A lot of the people in the buildings look like those in the world. If you're going in the buildings with all of your tattoos showing in the place of worship, you need to stop. Because if anyone that sees and look at you, the first thing they're going to say is you can't be saved. Why? Because you branded yourself. Your tattoo is a brand. And God said in the Old Testament, don't do that. And your broken down minister, who's probably tattooed also, won't tell you how wrong it is. Four classes of demons. You might say, well, the principalities that are the chief. Oh, wow. Yeah, let's, let's get into them. Well, no, they're right under Satan. They're not the ones that govern stuff. What they do is they get the work orders. They get the orders from Satan. The powers, they execute the program that Satan will execute. Rulers of the darkness of this world, those are the workhorses. And the wicked spirits are like the privates that take the orders to the field of battle. They go out and actually carry out the agenda of hell. 
Demons are not its or things. So when you see a lying spirit, don't say look at it. No, look at him. And demons don't have gender. They have personhood though. They have emotions, intellect, and will. They will take you captive at their will. And there's nothing you can do about it if you're not saved. So demons have personhood. That's why Jesus said in Mark 9, if you notice verse, let's go back to verse 14. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. That's good that they left the disciples and that whole scenario, and they ran to Jesus and saluted him. That's how it should be. Every minister should point you to Jesus. There should not be no minister taking claim for themselves. Jake's Dollar, Meyer, all of them, Osteen, they're filthy rich. You can't even call them. They're making merchandise of you and of you. You can't even call them. You can't call them and ask for prayer. You can't even reach them. The moment you call those ministries, the first thing they're talking about is give. And when you do so into like the Jordans, what do they do? Then they call you and hound you to give more. The Lord used me to put out their fundraisers we're doing to help people. I said, Lord, are your people going to do this? And God said, put the fundraiser out there because I have people who will sow into it to be a blessing to others. Apostle don't get no, there's no salary. salaries coming from what people share. So when the devil is telling some people, no, nah, I don't sow, you ain't got to sow. Look at the fundraiser and click like. It's good that you like it. Show how much you like it by sowing into it. Help us out. You Don't you know if you sow into the ministry, those that God used us to help, God will reward you too? He'll reward you too. But if he's blessed you to have substance, whether it's old Bibles, old clothing, whatever, finance, whatever it is, and you hear that voice, so, and God is not going to holler, he'll whisper it. So, share, pour into, cast your bread upon the waters. But the enemy will say, no, don't do it. Look at that. Don't do it. They ain't got no big giant building. Don't do it. They got a green thing up in the back instead of a banner. Don't do it. But you're not stopping God. Because look at this. The ministry you pay don't even share stuff like this with you. You could come in there after being in the club all night and that broken down pastor will say, oh, it's all right, God knows your heart. You could leave Bible study and go play a number and the pastor could find out and say, oh, it's okay. Uh, with prayer, you'll change. He don't want to offend you because if you leave, the so with that money that you're sharing. And then you got the sisters that are not married, that are in ministry, that all of the women in the ministry follow her and want to be like her. You want to be single too? You want to be the type of woman that a man look at and don't want you? So I was led to just pay attention because I'm a man of substance. God has made me responsible over a work. I can't just have anybody. I can't have no wife that don't want to minister, that's not ministry minded, that can't be reached by the phone, that want to argue, fuss, fight, and embarrass her husband and all that. I don't want nobody like that. Why? Because sisters are looking at her. So that season passed. And I got married to someone else. That the Lord blessed me to meet on Facebook. And God blessed us so much that before she got here, I told her, God said, we're going to have a daughter. Before I even saw her. And that's what we have right now. And this woman has a thing called prophetic connections. 
and she is claiming to be following God and a bit more following God as Judas was. Because if she heard God tell people stuff, then wouldn't she first hear him say, connect that daughter with her father? So now I have a daughter that when she get older, like a few other children I had when I wasn't saved, that mothers kept them from me, that said to me later when they got older, I don't believe my mother kept you from me. Well, I got three that I raised that love me with all their heart and respect me, and they're in the ministry. So my record speaks for itself. The only ones that have a problem with me of my children are those that's not saved whose mothers are not saved, who wasn't brought up saved, who only know that prayer is a word and not an action thing. And now I got to deal with a little six-year-old daughter of mine that I love dearly. I got to hear her tell me one day, you wasn't there for me. Now see, I got a trick for that one. Because every writing that her mother wrote me saying, if I have the baby and the baby live, I'm not going to let you see the baby or have nothing to do with the baby. I got all of that saved on my computer. I got the pictures of when we were married saved in a box and sealed. I got the pregnancy test. I got everything to show my daughter, look, it was real. See, God want to bless a lot of you sisters, but you're not asking God to prepare you for marriage. You think we went off course? No, we didn't. We're still on it. Four classes of demons. The one we're dealing with is the cosmocrator, the world ruler. Rulers of the darkness of this world. Because that demon is a territorial demon. That's the demon that's sitting over your life. That's sitting over your family. That's sitting over your generation. That sat over the generations before you. That sat over your mother, your grandmother, your great-grandmother, your father, your grandfather, your great-grandfather. That's the demon that's assigned to your family by Satan to make sure you don't be nothing. Hmm. Catch this revelation. You got, I pray you don't get mad, but if your toes hurt, just say ouch and be all right. That's the demon that, that you wonder why you're a lesbian because somebody before you and your family was. You wonder why you're a homosexual male is because somebody before you was. You, most of y'all that are homosexual was molested by the same sex in the family. Why? Because of that territorial demon that sat over your family. Well, was that the demon of homosexuality? No. That was a foul spirit who has demons lesser than him working under him to carry out foulness in your life. Crooked pastors, because somebody in your family was a crooked pastor. You got in ministry chasing money because somebody in your family drove the big car. And you said, no, I don't want to be like the pimp. I want to be like him. My, my father or my grandfather or my great-grandfather that wears the collar. Come on now. Territorial demon. Anger all in you because you was raised by somebody angry. Territorial demon. You can't get free because of that demon that is over your life. You're a drunk, an alcoholic, because your mother or your father was one. The same way you saw them act is how you act. Territorial demon. You battle them with crack, heroin, marijuana, weed. I don't care if it's piff, if, or sif. It don't matter. You're, you're, you're battling with that because someone in your family was battling with that. And some of you have, I had a father who was an alcoholic, but when I was in the world and unsaved, my drug of choice was weed. I used to smoke a half ounce a day and was selling weight. 
Yes, God delivered me from something. See, there's a territorial demon, a foul spirit over my father's side of the family. Both sides have foul spirits because then on my mother's side, I got religious relatives who will mention Jesus. But when you look at some of their ways, you can't see them. I got to tell the truth. That's another thing. How can you be free except you tell the truth? Be free. You're not going to be free as long as you think that your family all belong in the pulpit. No. No. Because there's some people groomed for ministry by the religious relative. This is how you talk. Listen, son. Little son. Little grandson. This is how you walk. And then tell the wife, now you got to act like this because he's great. And so her with no anointing is in the place of being first lady and being groomed. And then the ministry where, where people have come, not always because God sent them, but sometimes relatives bring them. Or friends, or they make friends, or some ignorant folk that see them with a collar go, you must know Jesus. No. Mm -mm. Oh, I was like that. Before God put me in ministry, the Lord sent me around to some ministries to go and talk to some pastors. One pastor who's deceased now said unto me, I saw an ashtray on his, kid, on his living room table. I said, do is it all right to smoke? He said, oh, Jesus' disciples smoked. They used to roll cigarettes. Demons. Doctrines of devils. God wants you to break free from that. He, he does. Because he can't move if you don't. When he walked up in Mark 9, verse 14, when he came to his disciples and saw a great multitude about them, don't think that this was by accident. Don't think he just happened to be in a neighborhood. This was predestined, partly so we can read it and draw from this. A few things, one of them being a lesson on demonology and how you get rid of demons. In verse 16, he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. My son is unable to talk. I know you gave him a mouth to talk with, but there's something stronger than him that's prohibiting him from talking. A dumb spirit. And wheresoever he, that spirit, not it, but he, that spirit taketh him, my son, he teareth him. He throw him all over the place. And my son foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away, meaning he lay there like he's dead. He's withering. He's, he's just drained, exhausted, can't move. The man said, and I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. There's a lot of ministers. People that call themselves apostles. And uh, listen, when it, when it rains, I don't own an umbrella. So when it rains, the Lord leads me to pray against the rain and it stops. My family know this. Certain ones of my family. My children that I raised in the ministry, they know. Is it me? No, it's God. But when you are walking with him and he's placed you in ministry and you're sold out for Jesus Christ. And you are a consecrated vessel. He said, if you believe on me, greater works than these. What I do, you're going to do also. I can't do what Jesus didn't know, but he anointed me to pray against the rain. To stop it. Some ministers have no power. They go to the hospital and pray for somebody and they die anyway. No power. You go up every, watch this. Every week you going up there in the prayer line for a specific
prayer requests and nothing's happening. It's not working. You're not changing. You're still being tormented. You're still being stressed out. You're still being aggravated. You still have no peace. You still can't sleep at night. You still can't put the crack pipe down. You still can't keep that needle out of your arm. You still smoking a cigarette or lighting a spliff or a blunt or a J. You don't know how to put it down and you receive prayer supposedly and nothing has happened. No power. And the devil don't even fear them because he know they have no power. The man said, I spake to thy disciples that they should cast them out. They could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Now people say, oh, the Lord will never tell you. He'll, he's long suffering. Yes, he is. But there come a point where Jesus say, you ain't got it yet. You've been on a praise and worship team for three months and you still in the club on Saturday? You've been delivered from sleeping with all these women and still you're doing it again, brother? Sister, you done got a bad name already. They calling you the H word and everything else from your past. And now here you is coming into church sleeping around. The Lord says, oh, faithless generation. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Then he just said, bring him to me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, the man, when that man saw Jesus, straightway, I mean right away, the spirit that was in him tore him up, threw him all over the place. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. Now here's the part that I, I find very funny. I said this before, I'll say it again. I can imagine this, watching all of this go on and Jesus just standing there looking. And then look at the father and say, how long is it ago since this came onto him? How long have you been going through this? Which Jesus knew because he know everything. But again, take this lesson because this is for you and I to read and gather information from. How long is it ago that since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And then the man gives a report, a natural report, excuse me. And oft times they have cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. This man had a legitimate request. He gave the natural report of what he saw. Now, there's a lot of people, I know some people got diabetes and say, the doctor said, I got it, but I don't claim that. By his stripes, I'm healed. Who stripes? And if you're healed, did the test say gone? No? Well, you need to pay attention to the natural report so you'll know what to pray for. If you say you're delivered from something, you don't want to do it no more. There's no sign of it. You say you're delivered from being angry, then you should be the most pleasantest person in the world. But if you're not, you're not delivered. The only one you're fooling is yourself. Because everybody around you on the outside of your trial can see your character. And they're talking about you. They see you playing numbers. They see you smoking. I remember years ago on CTV in New Haven, uh, the Lord was using me to do a live broadcast and I opened up the lines so people could call for prayer and a sister called in and said, aren't you the man that I see on Orchard Street with a cigarette in your mouth? The director was quiet. The camera people were quiet. For a minute I was quiet. I didn't know how to respond. I wanted to go off because I was busted. But the Holy Ghost said, no, just, just open your mouth. And I opened my mouth. And here's what he told me to say. 
That probably was me. Because at the time I was smoking cigarettes. That probably was me. But don't blame God for my shenanigans or for what I do wrong. That shows you that Brother Coleman, see now I, I didn't say apostle, even though I, I am an apostle and I was then. But sometimes we got to be humble. And I said, that shows my frailty, Brother Coleman. See, the apostle don't need uh, deliverance because he's delivered. God placed him. But the old man always want to come and make a cameo sometimes. Paul said in Romans 7, that which I want to do is not what I do, and that which I don't want to do is what I do. So your old man will always make a cameo and battle with your new nature while your soul is standing there watching the old man fight the new man. And you sitting there looking at this. One minute you're living right, the next minute you're stumbling or falling. And if you're golly sorry, you'll say, oh, I'm tired of doing this. But if you're not golly sorry and you have no conscience, then you won't even see your error. You won't see how wrong you are. This man gave a natural report of what his son was going through. And he said, if you can do anything. He didn't say, oh, whatever my son going through, that's on him. Some parents, your children, some have become gay. Some of your children follow other gods. Some become Muslims. Some become 5% and thinking they're God. Some doing whatever they want to do. And all you saying as a parent is, I support my child and I love them. They can do, go ahead, you just do what you want to do. And then you got the religious ones. Well, you know you got to follow the Lord and that's it. But yet and still you support everything else they do. No, no. This father said, if you can do anything, I'm tired of my son going through this. If you can do anything, have compassion on us, us, because I'm going through it with him, and save us or help us. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, if you believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Look at how he answered. The, qu the answer was, if thou canst believe. Then he said, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Now he's admitting there's a level of faith he don't have. There's a level of belief he does not have. You say you believe God. When, you know how God stopped me from smoking years ago? Here's what he said. I just bought, I had three pack of Newports, right? I was getting ready to light a cigarette. I was at my cousin, uh, the evangelist house, Evangelist Erica. I was at her house. I was sitting on the couch, and I was getting ready to light a cigarette. And the Lord, out of, the, out of nowhere, the Holy Ghost, he said to me, do you trust me? And I said, yes, Lord. And he said, then why are you smoking? And I said, oh. <laughs> See, there was conviction. Because I had a connection with him. Being in ministry and all. Some not in ministry, but you still have a connection with him. He said, why are you smoking? And he didn't say no more after that, about that. Because the, that one word tore me up. And this prayer box up here. I put, I bought, this is an old, old prayer box. I've had this for maybe 20 some years, but it's been less than that that I was smoking. But I barred up the cigarettes and broke them up and put them right in that prayer box. And one thing about the prayer box, if you put your hand in the prayer box, that's like putting your hands in the Ark of the Covenant. You will get dealt with. Once you put something in the prayer box, you don't go in there and read it. You don't, if somebody else puts something in there, you don't take it out. Who is you? You ain't got no power. You don't do nothing. The prayer box, that's God's mailbox. You want, uh, you want God to handle an issue? Put a prayer box together in your house. I'm going to do a YouTube video on how to make a prayer box. Put one in your house and put something in the prayer box and watch God work it out. This man said, help thy my unbelief. Now, verse 25, when Jesus saw that the people came running together. Now, now watch what Jesus did. While him and his man was having dialogue and his son was going through and everybody came running. When Jesus allowed all these people to come, 
That's when he moved. Sometimes God is going to move after you done prayed and fasted and prayed and fasted. You said, why hasn't he moved yet? Because the right people haven't showed up. See, God want those people to show up that he can prove he's God in your life and with you. That wife who's been faithful to that wayward husband. God haven't her answered you. He's heard you. He haven't answered it in your time because God want this husband to see that God is with you. How? It might be by the way you are dealing with this mess. And that man, according to 1 Peter chapter 3, Scripture says this. 1 Peter, you see Hebrew, James, 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 1, Scripture says this. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. So the way you carry yourself will make them straighten up. And you brothers, it's the same way. You got that crazy wife or that wife that stressed you, that don't support nothing you're doing, and, and she don't appreciate you and all of that. She tell everybody why she around them. Well, I got a good husband because she don't want nobody else to have you. But yet and still, in secret, she just putting you all through all kind of demonic stuff. The Lord said don't argue with her. Just shrug it off. Let her do her. And you stay focused on the Lord. And after a while, what will happen is she'll come to her senses and realize, I'm messing up. Because if a, if, a, if a woman is not treating her husband right and she got a man of God as a good husband, don't think other sisters ain't looking. Same thing with a brother. You got a woman of God, a wife that's a woman of God, and you ain't treating her right. You ain't going to service with her. You ain't, you ain't walking with her. You ain't praying with her. You ain't having a Bible study. Don't think another brother not looking going, man, it's always the bad guys that get the good girls. Because that's how it goes. Jesus let, when, when Jesus saw, verse 25, that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit. See, the foul spirit, that, that ruling demon that sat over that boy's life, that man's son's life. He rebuked him, the foul spirit, saying unto him, thou, meaning you, deaf and dumb spirit. So he talked about these two spirits. The father saw one. He said, my son got a dumb spirit. But Jesus said, you dumb and deaf spirit. First he rebuked me and corrected the foul spirit. So Jesus went to the, you got to catch this. He went to the root. First he rebuked the, the territorial demon. And then he called out the lesser demons, the work demons by name you dumb and deaf spirit I charge thee come out of him and enter no more into him and the spirit cried not the boy the spirit ah and rent him sore and came out of him when you start praying for stuff sometimes that's when it get worse that demon threw that boy around one last time and then got out of him and he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, wow, he's dead. Because he just laid there. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he was come into the house, when Jesus came in the house after this, and the, 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 the man's son was fine, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind the territorial demon, this kind, not the deaf and dumb spirit, no, not, not that one, but that foul spirit, this kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. Before you all get rid of the cigarettes, you have to get rid of the spirit of addiction. Before you get rid of or can be free from homosexuality, you have to be free from that perverted spirit. 
that has been sitting over your family for a long time because that demon runs through some families where every man is gay and every woman is a lesbian. I don't trust no lesbian spirit. I'm sorry. If you tell me you've been delivered, I got to see fruit because I don't believe it. I know it can happen. I know a man can be delivered from being a gay male, and I know a woman could be delivered from being a lesbian. I know this, but do you know it? Because when you're delivered, there's no proof. Now I got to tell you something I don't want to say. I used to be a womanizer when I was in the world. I loved women. And until I realized that, I couldn't be delivered. And for the record, all of us don't say, ooh, apostle, listen. Let me tell you something. All of us apostles were womanizers before we came in the Lord. Any true apostle, he, not she, because there ain't no women apostles in the Bible. Any true apostle is going to tell you the truth. And it's not always a bad thing because a man is supposed to desire a woman. But when you're in the world, you look for a one, at a woman one way. But when you're a man of God, you look another way. Like right now, I wouldn't dare be, I wasn't attracted to no unsaved woman. No woman showing everything. And I saw one woman uh, back in 2012, and I said, wow, you know, she would make a good wife. And the moment she showed me her two tattoos, two hearts, I said, nope, not her. Because mm -mm. if God going to use me to teach against tattooing oneself, which he does, how is it going to look? He's using me to teach against that, and the woman bearing my last name is standing there all tattooed up. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. Nah. You got to be careful who you let in your life. Sisters, you two, that man that slapped you, get rid of him. No, I, I tell you what. Just walk away before you end up in the hospital broken up. Because if he slapped you once, he's going to do it again. Yeah, he's going to do it again. If he called you a B, he's going to do it again. If he's cheating on you left and right, he's going to do it again. Unless he realizes his error, he's not going to change. That's just how it goes. This man saw what his son went through and brought him to Jesus. And Jesus said, this kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. Now, fasting is not, oh, I'm just going to stop eating. That's not fasting. No, fasting is when you deny your flesh so that your spirit man can connect with God. And when your spirit man connects with God, because you're denying yourself, read Isaiah 58. That's the fasting chapter. And it tells you about fasting. It tells you what to do. Let me make sure it's Isaiah 58. Because you got Isaiah 53, which is the Messianic chapter, I believe. Isaiah 58, cry aloud, spare not. Yeah, that's the fasting chapter, Isaiah 58. Read that. And it'll tell you what fasting is and how to conduct yourself. And God made a promise in there what he'll do. Matthew chapter 12, and we're closing on this. In chapter 12, remember how Jesus went to the root. He dealt with the foul spirit by rebuking him. And then he dealt with those lesser spirits. Uh, in Matthew chapter 12, if you notice verse 25, after Jesus had cast this other boy, this other, this devil out of the other man, these devils, these Pharisees in them, they claimed Jesus was possessed. It says in verse 22, then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. So in verse 25, it says in verse 24, but when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Bilzi, but the prince of the devils. Verse 25 says, And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. This is the foundation of anything spiritual. Jesus is trying to say it's, it's, a house divided against itself is not going to stand. I don't understand how Christian women marry Muslim men. Y'all serving two different gods. You serving the only true living God. And Allah is nothing but a black stone in the Kaaba, an idol that don't speak, hear, see, talk, or nothing. Don't even supposedly deal with his creation, as the Muslims say. But you serve a God that do deal with you. 
How can you be married to somebody that served another God? It won't work. Verse 26, and if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? He's not going to cast himself out. He can't. That's why you don't see a Muslim arguing with a Jehovah Witness. You don't see a Mormon arguing with a Jehovah Witness or a Catholic. Well, you don't see all those other religions. They don't bother each other, but you don't see them standing out there arguing. The only ones that they all come against are us that accept Jesus Christ. So Satan, all the religions he put together, they're not going to argue against each other because their goal is to get you away from Christ or stop you from finding him, and that's what they do. So in verse 27, Jesus said, And if I by busy but cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. Because these Jews was casting out demons, supposedly, and their families believe it. You know, they remember the seven sons of Sceva and the, the, uh, um, they were itinerant Jews and casting out devils and stuff, supposedly. But verse 28, Jesus said, But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. That means God's kingdom is present with you because all of that was in Jesus. He was a representative. Verse 29, or else how, now here's what you got to catch. We're going to close with this. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. He that is not with me is against me and he that gathers not with me scattereth abroad. Uh, let, let me go further. Something else the Lord wants you to see. If we jump down to verse, uh, oh God, don't you generation? Verse 43. When an unclean spirit is going out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out, and when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished, meaning when you are delivered, that demon comes back and see that you didn't change your life, you changed your friends, you didn't change your desires. I mean, God didn't clean you up and straighten you up. You are right now. You're just not Holy Ghost filled, but you just saved. And then that demon, when he sees that the Holy Ghost, he's not living in you, and that that place called your spirit, which is like a room that is still open and vacant, what happened is he findeth the empty, swept, and garnished, then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. Now this spirit is a territorial demon that comes back to where he said, his house, where I just came from. So that was his territory. He came back, saw that you changed, the person changed, but there's, the Lord is not living there. Then he go get seven other spirits worse than himself. These are the workers. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Whew. That took a lot. I hope you got something. For those that I see on you Facebook Live, it's look like some freezing going on. But that's all right because tonight I'm going to air it. I'm going to put it on YouTube and put it on Facebook so you'll see the video. It's going to be a part one and two, though, because I'm going to air it for television. It's going to be a two-part episode. Call the ministry for prayer, 475-300-3850. If you call now, you're going to get the voicemail because for, on Facebook, this is live. So obviously I'm not on the phone and I won't stop to go answer the phone. And if you're watching on television or YouTube uh, or at a later date uh, after December 2nd, then you call, I'm going to answer the phone, okay? And I'll sit with you and pray with you. Answer any question you have about this lesson. If you want a free copy of it, look in the description. It, there's a way you can get a free copy of it in its entirety where it's all, you know, the whole thing and not broken up. Uh, it's not broken in twos, but it's the whole thing. The only thing that we ask is a, a donation for shipping and handling. And that's also on the link when you click on it. We also ask that you sow into the ministry. We're trying to do care packages for the winter. People, women that are out there sleeping on benches, they need napkins. They need sanitary stuff. Look in the description here and you'll see where it says, you know, to make a donation from your heart. Do that so God can use the ministry to get these care packages for some people that are sleeping out there on benches. 
okay? But God uses us to touch many people's lives and help people. You can reach this ministry. So, I mean, you know, you'll be sowing into good ground. Just let God use you. And there's, we got a fundraiser on Facebook for women that are struggling, that have children but no husbands. They're going to need toys for Christmas. We don't celebrate as far as a tree and all of that stuff because we know G Jesus wasn't born on no December 25th. But we do celebrate this holiday season because it's a time for family, food, family, and fellowship. And look in the description and you'll see the ministry's website that you can go on and uh, enjoy the videos there and uh, 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 teaching resources. We have resources on any subject. We've been on television since 1996, okay? I've been in the office of Apostle, praise God, since 94. So we, you know, there's many subjects if you need some teaching DVDs. And you see the teaching God used the ministry to do. This is how, this is what Bible study would be, which actually in person Bible study, we do question and answer. I come with the resources and say, if you have a question, ask it, and we'll tackle it in the Word of God. Bible study is not standing there preaching at you. But this right here was just a word that the Lord said to share with you for this day. You know, uh, and again, look forward to uh, the closing words that God to do uh, toward the end of the year. Um, so that that way, uh, he's going to give a prophetic word through the ministry and so forth. A friend of mine, Apostle Whitfield, you've seen some of his videos through this ministry because the Lord used this ministry to help him out and uh, to get established in certain ways. You know, we got to be there for one another. That's our way of sowing uh, is to help him uh, in the ministry, to, to jumpstart the ministry. He just came back to New Haven. He's, he was on television before. He's already a public figure and a TV producer in New Haven. He's been there for many years. But now he's came, he came back after being gone for 19 years. And so uh, he come back in town, and the Lord used us to, to be a blessing to that ministry. It's called Rhema Faith World Outreach and Street Ministry. So look for that on YouTube. Uh, and, you know, just hold them up in prayer. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us for our sins and shortcomings and false and wrongs. Thank you for this lesson. Thank you for this time. Thank you for the fellowship. Thank you for the time spent. Thank you for my brethren and my sisters. Thank you for all this. Bless those that support the ministry, even after this little talk. Bless those that, that help with the phone bill. Bless, just bless those, Lord, that, that love you and that uh, we're in fellowship. We, we just ask that you bless each and every one. Let everybody sleep good tonight, have a good dream, and sleep all through the night, and wake them up tomorrow to see another day, to have another chance of life. We just thank you for everything. We love you. We ask that you keep us before you and restore unto me the virtue that I went out. Please, Father. In Jesus' name, we thank you for hearing us and for answering us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Again, we love you. I like to say God bless you, and y'all have a good night, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And, uh, you know, write me in my inbox. Let me know. You know, if you got any questions, again, 475-300-3850. Those of you watching by television, that's the number, and the website is going to appear on the screen. Uh, and you can get in touch with me, okay? And let the Lord uh, use you to sow into the ministry because we are doing the work that the Lord will have us to do. And we need a little help to be able to help others, okay? Open your hand, please. Just, just open your hand. It's not going to hurt you. You can share $5. You can share $10. You can share 15 It doesn't matter as a donation. Your donations are all tax deductible. If you itemize on your taxes, then we'll definitely give you a receipt confirming your donation so that that way you can use it uh, with the IRS or whatever in your taxes, okay? We love you, and God bless you. Now I'm getting ready to end this, and I'm tired, okay? God bless you. We love you. Bye-bye. I tell you, that's, that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. 
I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care. <laughs> Till the next time. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. For all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus, I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have. Sad.